more time, everybody. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Town Board of the Town of Austin regular meeting for Tuesday, June 11th, 2019. Please rise, join me for the pledge, and remain standing for a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Remain standing uh, for a moment of silence. We were informed last Wednesday that our friend and longtime volunteer member, the exact of the town planning board, Greg McWilliams, passed away at the age of 70. He also served on the town zoning board prior to his time on the planning board. Greg was a renowned architect, respected expert in his field, and always willing to lend a hand. But most of us knew him as a friend. Greg's knowledge, as well as his warmth and humor, will be sorely missed on the planning board as well as throughout our community. We send our best wishes to his family during this difficult time. Join me in a moment of silence for Greg McWilliams. Councilmember Shaw? Present. Councilmember Wilcher? Present. Supervisor Lemonberg? Present. Okay, so we we'll start off this evening with um, a couple of public hearings in the matter of the resolution to become a suburban town, which is our first public hearing. And I will open up the floor to Ms. Tamadana to give us a short explanation as to why we're holding this public hearing this evening. Well, actually, on the agenda a little bit later, you're going to be adopting a resolution to abandon this public hearing. And the reason for that is because under town law, there's an article 3A entitled suburban town, which gives towns that have designated themselves this some additional authorities in terms of the administration of the town government. And so it was something that was being considered for this town to look into and then upon doing some further research and reviewing this department the New York State Secretary of State's website it turned out that the town board back in 1964 had already made such a designation so this public hearing and any further action by the town board is effectively moot because the action's already been done so we called for the public hearing before realizing this um, and so if the town board is so agreeable, there is a proposed resolution on for later to abandon the public hearing. Okay. So with that, I would open up the public hearing to anybody who has any comments on this resolution from a suburban town. Going once, going twice, gone. Thank you. So may I have a motion to, what am I doing? Closing it, abandoning it? I mean, nothing in it. You don't really have to do anything. Um, okay. You'll do the resolution because closing the public hearing is a procedural step before taking any further action. Since you're not really taking any further action, this was just really left on as because it had been noticed as such right. and as an explanatory opportunity for the public who would see this on the agenda and wonder what was happening. So I don't really think you need to take any further action. Okay. Doke. That we'll move on to our next public hearing on our community development block grant applications for 2019 through 2021. As you may remember, the town applied for four grants under the 2019-2021 cycle for community development block grant funds from the Westchester County Department of Planning last year. Or I should say through them because the monies really do come from the federal government. We were awarded $75,000 this year as we requested to help fund the purchase of an electric bus for our senior nutrition program. And we are looking forward to receiving um, shortly the contract for that. Um, we anticipate in July. We were not recommended for funding for the future years, however, because our applications were put on hold since we still needed the time to iron out some details on those projects. But the county gives us the opportunity each year to update our applications. So we are now preparing an update to our 2020 and 2021 applications for upgrades to our senior nutrition program kitchen and improvements to Lewis Angle Park. The town board will need to approve a resolution on June 25th to update our budget numbers. So we started the public hearing process this week to make sure we had the time that was needed to review. I will now ask Victoria Caffarelli from my office to give an update on the applications before we open up for public comments. 
Okay, um, so we don't have a ton of materials um, for review tonight. We're still, still going down to the wire here, getting everything settled, um, but I'll go in chronological order. So in 2020, we're hoping to get some funds um, through CDBG to um, renovate our senior center kitchen, which has it needs some updating and addressing some issues to make it more functional kitchen. Um, we applied what we put in for last year, our budget numbers, we looked at a total project cost of $240,000, um, which is a 50-50 match. So the town will be paying for 120,000 and hopefully 120,000 from CDBG. Now that we've been working with some architects, it's looking like the project will cost about $300,000 for us to complete um, with now $150,000 hopefully coming from CDBG and $150,000 coming from the town. Um, we're hoping to get some grant funding from some other sources to help support that match or perhaps we'll get some in-kind contributions, but it's likely um, we're mostly going to rely on grants and some cash contributions from the town. Um, and so we're, we're working on a prioritized scope for us to look at. So maybe it won't get all the way up to $300,000. Um, see what really needs to get done and kind of work back from there. So that is all in development, which we will have in advance of the June 25th meeting. Now moving to um, our requests for 2021, which were for improvements to Lewis Angle Park. We broke it down into two different projects. Um, the first being um, renovations to the beach and playground area, and the other being improvements to the stage and comfort station area of the park. Um, last year, we had put in for um, basically the maximum amount we could ask for, which is $250,000. Um, but what we've kind of prioritized here is to complete a plan for Engle Park with some community input about what should go there. Where should the comfort station go? Where should the stage go? How can we make this a better park for our community? Um, so what we're going back to the county this year on is still not really firm budget numbers because we're not sure what is going to come out of that planning process. But we're asking the county to consider um, giving us the funding for 2021 if the town put puts in as part of their match funds to support the planning process. So we have um, some proposals from AKRF that we've used for past grant applications that we unfortunately have not received. Um, so this year, this we're looking at a total project cost for the beach and playground with $250,000 coming from CDBG, a $640,000 project about, um, and for the Angle Park stage and comfort station area, it's a project cost of $578,000 about, um, but that's to support improvements to the beach, new kayak storage, new parking spaces, um, expanded sidewalks, a new playground, um, a new comfort station structure, sewer line, electrical water service to that facility, um, as well as a new band shelf structure and the engineering and architecture to support that project. So it's a big project, but we're hoping that if we're showing that we're seeking community input, we're really giving this a good investment and taking time to evaluate it. They'll look upon it favorably in this cycle, and we'll have some good okay. news in a couple months. And as part and parcel to that, we are, um, as you all know, are also going to be applying to the state this round for a um, local waterfront re revitalization plan. And we think that that's going to lay the foundation for us to then be able to get additional grant funding from the state uh, to help offset some of these costs and our our local match. So that's that that's the big the big plan. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have uh, an incredible public space on the waterfront and we want to put it to our best its best use. We think that it's a lovely use now, but we think even better. And um, you know we have lots of people down there more and more every year and we want to make it something that's really suitable for the public at large. With community input. Any of it. Um, okay, so with that, we would, we'll open up the public hearing for comments on our CDBG applications. Anybody? Going once? Going twice? Want to say something, Councilwoman Phillip? Okay, <laughs> fantastic. So with that, we will adjourn the public hearing to June 25th. Do I have a motion? So moved. Sure. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All righty. So that's it for our public hearings and moving into announcements. Thank you to all of our community groups and businesses who participated in one of the best ever 
I think, village fairs, at least the ones that I've experienced, this weekend in Ossany. Extra thanks for coordinating going to Keith Gordon for the Cedar Lane Art Center booth, Fern Casada for the Forest of Fears Haunted Attraction booth, Mitzi Elks for the Town and Village Environmental Advisory Committee booth, and Susie Ross for the Green Austin booth, and to our parks crew for helping set up and break down for all of our town booths. Of course, we're also grateful for all the work um, provided by the village, um, the, Austin, the Austin Police, the Ambulance, Fire Department, as well as uh, the Chamber of Commerce, all the hard work that they did and the support that they got from the village, DPW, etc. Um, it was really a fantastic day, and I'm sure that my colleagues agree. Saw you all there. And it was good. Uh, this Saturday is the first Mind, Body, Spirit Ossining class of the season. And we were uh, touting this at the fair. I'm going to hold it up, except for I think I have the Spanish sign up. We'll hold it up in English if you can zoom in. We have this flyer in Spanish and English. And we're very excited um, to uh, this week to... Um, recognize Solara Delphi for Sharky, the belly dance workout, this Saturday, June 15th at Engel Park Stage at 11 a.m. Register in advance. Remember, it's free. But if you register through the Village and Town of Austin's online recreation catalog, you will qualify for raffles and giveaways from participating businesses. And you will also be able to um, be contacted in the event of any weather-related cancellation or location change. So costs you nothing, uh, but gets you lots. So please consider registering if you do want to go to the belly dancing and or any of our other classes that are going to be um, starting again this, this Saturday and then going. We have classes all the way through September right now, and we will be adding more to the schedule. So check regularly online. Um, okay. Thank you also to the Open Door Family Medical Center for their partnership and Recreation Superintendent Bill Garrison for helping us offer pre-registration this year. We're very excited about all that. And um, also to Open Door for their wonderful graphics. Um, I think that this really captures so much of it. I know I showed this already, but just to show you again, it's a great graphic and we're going to be using it more, so take a look. Okay. Um, if you live in the village of Briarcliff Manor, hopefully you have already checked your mailboxes for your 2019-2020 village tax bill per village manager Phil Zagarelli and village treasurer Ed Ritter regarding this year's mailing. Quote, your 2019-2020 tax bills have been mailed via first class mail. However, because they and other municipalities have received reports of delayed mail deliveries or even non-receipt of official mail, they're providing you with this advisory. Please take the opportunity to read and review tax payment responsibilities. And I know you can get more information on the Village of, Os of Briarcliff, uh, Village of Briarcliff website, um, all about that. If you live in the Village of Austin, reminder notices have gone out to pay your second half village tax by the end of July if you did not pay in full in January. Tomorrow, Wednesday, June 12th, you won't want to miss this exciting event at the Austin Public Library. Come for an evening with best-selling author Douglas Brinkley, for a discussion on his newest book, American Moonshot, John F. Kennedy and the Great Space Race, as part of the library's Bob Minzenheimer author series. Tickets are $30 and can be purchased in advance online, which includes a copy of the book. All proceeds will benefit the Friends of the Austin Public Library. Also, I know it's not too late. Um, you have about 15 more minutes, I think, to get to the opening of the Austin Arts Council member show at the Austin Public Library. That's happening tonight, and I just remembered it, so I'm adding it up. If the space race isn't exactly your thing, head over to Good Choice Kitchen instead tomorrow, where Chef Sarah Bowen of the Catskill Animal Sanctuary will be behind the stove fixing up some delicious vegan provisions and teaching you how to recreate them for family and friends. All recipes featured are from the Sanctuary's new cookbook, Compassionate Cuisine, which will be available for purchase after the class. All proceeds go directly toward the Sanctuary's continued programming. Class begins at 6.30 p.m., $75 per person for chefs ages 13 and up. Make sure to pre-register in person at Good Choice Kitchen or by calling 930-1591 or emailing info at goodchoicekitchen.com. Saturday, June 15th, from 9 a.m. to noon, the Austin Historic Cemeteries will hold another gravestone cleaning and restoration workshop at Dale Cemetery. No experience is necessary, and community service credit is available to students. For more information, contact the OHCC at ohcc10562 at gmail.com. Also this Saturday is the Austin Portuguese Festival, which will take place in Market Square starting at noon. 
make sure to come down for food, music, and fun. I will see you there. I'm sure some of my board colleagues will be joining me as well. Bill T. Jones is coming back to Ossany with even more opportunities for community involvement. If you participated with them last year, you know what an incredible chance this is to get your dance on. Join the Bill T. Jones Arnie Zane Company this Saturday, June 15, from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. to participate in a creative process with them. This is for ages 16 and up, but no dance experience is required. Sign up at bethanyarts.org. I think this is at the community center, but I'm not 100% sure. There are several other opportunities to enjoy local performances this weekend, starting with Alexis Cole's Canary and Combat Boots performance at Westchester Collaborative Theater, Friday, June 14th, and Saturday, June 15th at 7.30 p.m. Tickets are available at wctheater.org. Alexis is one of my favorites, and I'm definitely going to that Friday night. Wind Feather Harmonies uh, is also performing. Christine Alaventi and Joe Durace will be live at the steamer Friday, June 14th at 8 p.m. And tickets can be purchased at AustinArtsCouncil.org. $20 a ticket or $15 for OAC members. Next Tuesday, June 18th, the Entrepreneur Next Door series continues with a conversation with Lisa and Dan Acasio, owners of the Tasty Table, and Mike and Miriam Risco, owners of Mike Risco Music at the Tasty Table from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. This will be a great opportunity to learn some business smarts from some of Austin's experts. Um, and then also we have Make Music Day, June 21st. Um, it's going to be happening all around town, also um, sponsored and organized by the Riscos. So please make sure to look out for more information about that. And um, I know that Clearwater uh, Great Hudson River Revival is happening this weekend, and that's up in Croton at Croton Point Park, um, in the county park. Wonderful opportunity to learn lots about ways that you can help keep our Hudson, beautiful Hudson River clean and our environment more um, healthy. And also, uh, here are some fantastic musical artists. And uh, finally, let's not forget June 15th is Father's Day. So, no, June 16th. June 16th is Father's Day. So we're going to wish a great, big, happy Father's Day to all of the great fathers out there and grandfathers and uncles, including Mr. Northern Welcher, Councilman. Okay, so uh, next, oh, I think, no, I, did I, do, I didn't, I just want to also note that Tuesday, June 18th, we will be holding our work session at, um, right here at the court facility at 8688 Spring Street instead of our usual location at 16 Croton Avenue because um, we have uh, something happening at the um, town, at, we have a grievance day. Thank you. Grievance day is happening. There's going to be lots of uh, people coming to the um, town village, village hall at 16 Croton Avenue. So instead, we will be here at the court facility. We're devoting that work session to a board discussion about the River Knoll project, which is proposed for the Stony Lodge site on Croton Dam Road. And um, that project is still before the town planning board. Um, but we have had a call for some. Um, discussion in public, so we're going to talk a little bit about um, some conversations um, that uh, we were having with the developer that we'd like the public to have an opportunity to hear about, and also we'll have an opportunity for public comment at that work session, which is unlike what we usually do. So we hope you can join us, but if not, you uh, can take a look at the work session on our town's YouTube channel because we will be fil filming the meeting that day. Finally, the weather is warming up, and it won't be long before the spray park at Lewis Engel Park is open every day. However, until school is out for the summer, it's only open weekends from 12 to 7. We have had some mechanical issues with one of the pipes, um, with one of the little water features, so we think we have it under control, and it should be ready by this weekend, but just check the Friday Supervisor's update on the town website or the e-blast to make sure that the spray deck will be open this weekend. And with that, are there any additional announcements from my board colleagues? Mike. On. All right. Uh, tomorrow night is Wednesday night. The Austin Bolton Community, the second Wednesday of the month, is when they hold their meetings to vote in new members. So if you've been thinking about that and this is the time you want to join, uh, go to obcc.org, click on membership and get your application, come on down tomorrow night and join. Okay.
And that just reminds me, I wasn't going to mention it, but I am going to again just remind everybody that our Independence Day firework celebration will take place this year, July 3rd at Lewis Angle Park. And uh, we have a rain date of Monday, July 8th. So July 3rd is a Wednesday. July 8th is a Monday for the rain date, which we were really hoping we're not going to have to use. Okay. So um, from that, we are going into July 3rd uh, fireworks. And also we are going to have a spray park ribbon cutting with um, Senator Carlucci. Um, and we're working on that for July 9th, which is the day after the rain date for fireworks. Um, so we hope to see everybody on a very sunny, bright day. Uh, and that will be at noon. But the fireworks usually go off at around 9.25, give or take a couple minutes. We start, food trucks are going to probably be coming in around uh, 5 o'clock. And music starts at around 7.30. So I think that's everything. And then, like I said, the fireworks usually. But you don't want to just come for the fireworks. And there's so many other good things. And we'll be talking about some of them a little bit later in this meeting. So make sure you get down there nice and early. Get a great spot. Enjoy the fantastic park that we have down there and all of the other features. Um, okay. With that, I think we're going to liaison reports. Are there any? And here none. We'll move directly into our departmental reports. We have none this evening. We anticipate our next round of departmental reports will be on the 25th. And um, do we have any public comment on agenda items? Calm down, everybody, one at a time. OK, hearing none, we'll move directly into our board resolutions. Oh, I'm sorry, on our agenda items? Or did you want to have a comment on something else? Okay, sure. Come on up and introduce yourself, please, Stanley. No, da, da, da. There you go. Come on, let's see you too. Fantastic. Uh, do have to... Just say okay, your name great. and. Good evening, everyone. Stanley Dorsonville, district representative for Senator Carlucci's office. I just uh, want on the first uh, point about the town of Austin being a suburb. So it was, it was already a suburb. Oh, a suburban town. A so suburban town, right? It's a characterization under law. So basically, if the town board decided to avail itself and designate itself as um, a suburban town, which is something that um, you have to meet the statutory requirements in order to be eligible. Um, and then there are certain provisions in terms of the management and the organization of the departments within the town. Um, but the town, the Secretary of State, has to publish a list every year with the, the, the laws that have been adopted that identifies all of the suburban towns within the state of New York. And um, the town of Austin was on that list with an effective date of January 1st, 1964, along with seven or eight other towns within the, um, the county of Westchester. So it all just happened a long time ago. Oh, so it was already done deal? Yes, done deal. Oh, okay, cool. Long before us. <laughs> Great. Year of Thanks. my birth. Okay, I dated myself, but you all know that already. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, thank you for that public comment. Um, okay, so moving right along, we have our, our board resolutions. Okay, approval of minutes, regular meeting, May 28th, 2019. Resolved that the town board of the town of Austin hereby approves the May 28th, 2019 minutes of the regular meeting as presented. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Anybody was here? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Approval of voucher detail report resolves that the town board of the town of Austin hereby approves the voucher detail report dated June 11, 2019, in the amount of $531,240.15. Do I have a motion? Ooh. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I forgot to ask if you had any. Okay. All right. Moving right along. Um, resolution lease agreement for senior nutrition program Chrysler Pacifica number two. Resolved that the town board of the town of Austin authorizes the supervisor to sign a lease, a lease schedule with Acme Auto Leasing LLC, North Haven, Connecticut, for the 12 month lease with $3,200 monthly payments with a $1 bio at the end of the lease term for a 2019 Chrysler Pacifica hybrid Touring, bin number 2C4RC1H77KR703. 089 and be it further resolved that this lease schedule is subject to the terms of the municipal master open end vehicle lease agreement between the town of Austin and Acme Auto Leasing LLC dated March 31st, 2017. Do I have a motion? 
So moved. Second. So our senior nutrition program has had some vehicle issues these past few months. Uh, so we leased to purchase a second Chrysler Pacifica to replace a van that had a malfunctioning driver side door. It just arrived a few weeks ago, so now it's time for us to sign the lease agreement for this vehicle with a buyout at the end of the lease term. Good news is that we should be able to get rebates from both New York State and the federal government through, well, that's part, kind of part of the lease deal, um, but we ended up paying less because it's a plug-in hybrid vehicle and we get to add another green vehicle to our town fleet. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Permission to sell alcohol at Town of Austin Independence Day Fireworks, Sing Sing Kill Brewery. Resolve that the Sing Sing Kill Brewery is hereby authorized to operate a concession stand during the Austin Independence Day Fireworks event held on July 3, 2019 at the Lewis Angle Waterfront Park in the Town of Austin and to sell for consumption by persons over 21 years of age Sing Sing Kill Brewery craft beer and be it further resolved that the Sing Sing Kill Brewery will also obtain all necessary permits including an event permit from the New York State Liquor Authority and will provide proof of insurance and the letter of indemnity to the town in a form acceptable to councils of the town. We have a motion. Second. So we are so thrilled to have Sing Sing Kill Brewery at our annual Independence Day fireworks celebration at Lewis Angle Park. This year our fireworks, um, as I mentioned before, will take place on Wednesday, July 3rd, and we are happy to be able to introduce local craft beer brewed right here in Austin to the festivities. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Be opposed? Okay. Permission to sell alcohol at Town of Austin Summer Concert Series, Sing Sing Kill Brewery. Resolve that the Sing Sing Kill Brewery is hereby authorized to operate a concession stand during the Summer Concert Series events held on July 5th, 12th, 19th, and 26th, and August 9th, 16th, 23rd, and 30th at the Lewis Engel Waterfront Park in the Town of Austin and to sell for consumption by persons over 21 years of age Sing Sing Kill Brewery craft beer, and be it further resolved that the Sing Sing Kill Brewery will also obtain all necessary permits, including an event permit from the New York State Liquor Authority, and will provide proof of insurance and a letter of indemnity to the town in a form acceptable to counsel to the town. Do I have a motion? Second. So, uh, Sing Sing Co. Brewery also asked us for permission to sell um, their beverages at our concert series. So, working closely with the Austin Police and this year with our Greater Austin Chamber to add Food Truck Fridays to our waterfront offerings, we're excited to approve this form so that New York State will allow the brewery to share their delicious beverages with our summer concert goers and others who decide just to come down for the food trucks. Um, also, I just, just to remind uh, the brewery that you still need to go through an application process through the chamber, um, and uh, we're, this is us authorizing you to sell alcohol, but that part, the rest of that part still needs to be buttoned up between you and the Chamber of Commerce, since they are um, actually organizing Rock Fridays and the Summer Concert Series this year. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Permission to serve alcohol in Lewis Angle Park, Austin Fire Department Parade. Resolve that the Austin Fire Department is hereby authorized to operate a concession stand following the Austin Fire Department Parade event held on August 2nd, 2019 at the Lewis Angle Waterfront Park in the town of Austin and to serve for consumption by persons over 21 years of age, beer, and be it further resolved that the Austin Fire Department will also obtain all necessary permits, including an event permit from the New York State Liquor Authority and will provide proof of insurance and the letter of indemnity to the town in a form acceptable to counsel to the town. So we have a motion. Second. Annually, our wonderful and award-winning Austin Volunteer Fire Department hosts a parade, followed by a celebration at the waterfront. We are once again happy to host this festive event in our town park this year. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Personnel Parks Department Seasonal Appointment. Resolve that the Town Board of the Town of Austin hereby appoints Armando Hernandez, Yorktown, to the seasonal position of Park Groundskeeper in the Town Parks Department, effective June 17, 2019, at a rate of $20 per hour. Do I have a motion? Moved. Second. So we interviewed Armando last year for another position, and we were incredibly impressed, so much so that when we realized we needed another set of hands this summer to keep up with the grass in our parks, we thought of him immediately and asked if he was still interested. Hopefully Armando will help get us through the summer and keep up all of our properties looking their very best. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Fireworks approval, St. Augustine Church. 
Whereas the Church of St. Augustine, by letter dated June 4th, 2019, has requested a permit from the town of Ossining for a fireworks display to be held on the evenings of Wednesday, July 24th, 2019, rain date Thursday, <coughs> July 25th, 2019. Whereas the church has submitted the information required by section 101-5 of the Code of the Town of Ossining and section 405-2 of the Penal Law of the State of New York, and whereas the bond insurance coverage submitted by the church has been found by the Town Council to comply with the requirements of section 101-6 of the Ossining Code and section 405 of the State Penal Law, and whereas the fire chief has made an inspection of the premises where the fireworks display will be held and reported that such display will not be hazardous to persons or property. Now therefore be it resolved that the application of the Church of St. Augustine's for a fireworks display on Wednesday, July 24th, 2019 at 9.15 p.m., rain date Thursday, July 25th, 2019, is approved subject to the following conditions pursuant to section 4053 of the penal law. One, the actual point at which the fireworks are to be fired shall be at least 200 feet from the nearest permanent building, public highway, or railroad, or other means of travel, and at least 50 feet from the nearest above ground telephone or telegraph line, tree, or other overhead obstruction. Two, the audience at such display shall be restrained behind the behind line at least 150 feet from the point at which the fireworks are discharged and only persons in active charge of the display shall be allowed inside these lines. Three, all fireworks that fire a projectile shall be so set up that the projectile will go into the air as nearly as possible in a vertical direction unless such fireworks are to be fired from the shore or a lake or other large body of water in which in which case they may be directed in such manner that the falling residue from the def deflagration will fall into such lake or body of water. Four, any fireworks that remain unfired after the display is concluded shall be immediately disposed of in a, safe, in a way safe for the particular type of fireworks remaining. Five, no fireworks display shall be held during any windstorm in which the wind reaches a velocity of more than 30 miles per hour. Six, all persons in actual charge of firing the fireworks shall be over the age of 18 years, competent and physically fit for the task. Seven, there shall be at least two such operators consistently on duty during the discharge and Eight, at least two soda, acid, or other approved type fire extinguishers of at least two and one and a half gallons capacity. Each shall be kept as widely separated points as possible within the actual area of the display, and it is further resolved that a copy of this resolution, duly certified by the town clerk of the town of Ossining, shall constitute a permit meeting the requirements of the code of the town of Ossining and the penal law of the state of New York. Do I have a motion? Second. So this is an annual resolution for us, and as we know, we are not alone in looking forward to the St. Augustine's fireworks as part of their week-long festival this year. As always, thanks to the Austin Fire Department for helping us to coordinate this effort for everyone's safety. All those in favor? Oh, aye. 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 Sorry, one second. So, yeah. um, did we, in fact, get the insurance coverage? Because I know that there was a question about making sure all the paperwork had been submitted. Um, I don't recall, but I know that there was a packet that had an awful lot of information in it, and I do believe I saw an insurance certificate, but I'm not 100% positive. So um, so we need to make sure that we have it. So we, do we want to just add a friendly amendment to say um, ending insurance coverage? Oh, the new requirements of it. Just, yeah, um, just eliminate the third whereas clause, which talks about that the bond insurance coverage submitted by the church has been found by town council to comply with the requirements and just change that into another resolved clause that um, required. the church shall ensure that all bond insurance coverage is submitted um, to the satisfaction of town council in okay. compliance with the requirements of section 1016 of the Austin and Code and section 405 of state penal law. Okay, that friendly amendment. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Okay. Um, but that also puts me in mind of another friendly amendment that I'd like to do, perhaps, is to go back to the Sing Sing Hill Brewery um, fireworks, because um, it doesn't include a rain date. And I think we should include a rain date in that. Permission to sell alcohol for an event held on July 3rd, 2019, rain date July 8th, 2019. Okay? Go back and do that for um, resolution D. Friendly amendment? Say as a rain date, uh, hmm? or any rain date set by the board for that. Already set it, locked into okay, it. Okay, rain date. And well, no fireworks. Honestly, that's, that's sad. Yeah, that's all the right. way it goes. Okay, um, so uh, all those in favor of uh, changing as resolution as amended? Aye. 
Yeah, I would just do a new motion and second. Okay, a new motion. What what is my new motion? Just in, in instead of just doing, I don't. Was there a motion to amend, or was it just there was a? It was just an all in favor. Just an all in favor. So. Oh, okay. So can I have a motion to amend resolution D to add July eighth as remaining date? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Alrighty. Moving right along. Resolution abandoning public hearing on resolution to designate the town of Ossining as a suburban town, whereas Article 3A of, the, of New York Town Law authorizes a town board by resolution after public hearing, subject to permissive referendum, to designate the town as a suburban town, which contains certain additional powers designed to help the town provide needed services, and whereas at its, May on, uh, its meeting on May 28, 2019, the town board called for a public hearing to be held on June 11, 2019, for the purposes of considering whether to adopt a resolution designated the town of Ossining as a suburban town. And whereas the town board subsequently learned through the New York State Secretary's Secretary of State's records that the town of Austin was designated a suburban town effective January 1st, 1964, and therefore no action is required by the town board regarding this matter. And now therefore be it resolved, the town board hereby abandons and discontinues the public hearing to consider a resolution to declare the town a suburban town as moot. Do I have a motion? Second. As already discussed, therefore, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution calling for a public hearing on Local Law Number 8 of 2019, amendments to Chapter 74 of the Town Code entitled Dogs to Regulate Registration for and Use of the Town's Dog Parks. Whereas the Town of Austin has a dog park at Cedar Lane Park and a dog run at, C at Ryder Park, the dog parks. And it has come to the town's attention that people were using the dog parks without registering their dogs and without following the posted rules for the for use of the dog parks, and whereas the town board desires to enact legislation to streamline the process for licensing dogs, as is required for all dogs in the unincorporated town, and registering dogs for the dog park, to codify the rules and regulations for the use of the dog parks, and to impose penalties for those who violate these provisions. And now therefore be it resolved, the town board of the town of Austin hereby calls for a public hearing to be held on Tuesday, June 25th, 2019, at the Birds All Fagan Police Court facility, located at 8688 Spring Street, Austin, New York 10562 in the matter of local law number 8 of 2019 amendments to chapter 74 of the town code entitled dogs to regulate registration for and use of the town's dog parks good motion so um, we have been working for the past several weeks to codify the rules of the Cedar Lane dog parks as established by the Recreation Advisory Board into law and also to have them apply to the dog run at Ryder Park um, as we dug deeper unintended into this issue realized that it is also a great opportunity to change the process of registering and renewing a dog park registration to not only make it easier for residents but also to ensure the safety of dogs and their owners so everyone have a good time at the parks um, we were thankful to council tamadana for guiding us through this process we had a, a very good work session and councilman Walter, i'm sorry that you weren't there because very quick and buttoned up and you would have really been very, very excited about that. Um, but we, we, I think we all took a good hard look. We got great input, and we're going to continue to great, get additional input through the public hearing process. So um, we're thankful for all those who brought it to our attention. All those in favor of calling for the public hearing on the local law dogs? All those in favor? Aye. No. Anybody opposed? <laughs> okay. Okay. Are you really abstaining? Okay. Okay. <laughs> <Just saying. laughs> um, okay. Resolution adopting local law number two of 2018, formally proposed local law number five of 2018, to enact chapter 84 of the town code, energize New York open sea pace financing program, and to authorize the town supervisor to enter into agreement. Whereas pursuant to chapter 178 of the town code entitled sustainable energy loan program, as authorized by article five dash L of the New York State General Municipal Law, the town can provide financing to qualified property owners for the installation of clean energy, which program is administered by the Energy Improvement Corporation, EIC, a local development corporation fully organized under Section 1411 of the Not-for-Profit Corporation Law. And whereas EIC has proposed a new clean energy financing program entitled Energy 
Energize New York opened CPACE financing program, CPACE program, which removes some of the burdens on the municipality by allowing financing through private lenders and where the municipality is not responsible for repaying the loan in the event the property owner defaults. And whereas EIC provided the town with a template of local law, of a local law to enact the CPACE program and draft agreement with EIC to administer the program, which documents the town board and its council have had the opportunity to review, edit, and receive feedback from EIC. And whereas the town board held a duly noticed public hearing at its regular meeting on Tuesday, April 23rd, 2019 at 7.30 p.m. in the Birds All Fagan Police Court Facility at 8688 Spring Street, Austin, New York, on proposed local law number five, of 2019 to adopt Chapter 84 of the Town Code entitled Energize New York Open CPACE Financing Program, which public hearing was duly adjourned and continued subsequent meetings and members of the public being able to attend and be heard, the public hearing was closed on May 28, 2019. And now therefore be it resolved, the Town Board finds that the that it is the policy of the town to achieve energy efficiency and renewable energy goals, reduce greenhouse gas emissions, mitigate the effect of global climate change, and advance a clean energy economy that and that implementing the CPACE program in accordance with state law will serve as a means to satisfy this policy. And be it further resolved, the Town Board determines that this is a Type 2 action pursuant to the State Environmental Quality Review Act, and therefore no further review is required. And be it further resolved that the Town Board hereby adopts Local Law Number 2 of 2019, formally proposed Local Law Number 5 of 2019, to enact Chapter 84 of the Town Code, and the Town Clerk is directed to enter said local law in the minutes of this meeting into the local law book for the Town of Ossing, to publish said minutes in a newspaper published in the Town, if any, or in such newspaper published in the county in which such town may be located having a circulation in such town, and affidavits of said publication shall be filed with the Town Clerk, and to file a copy of said local law with the Secretary of State of New York. And be it further resolved, the town supervisor is hereby authorized to enter into the proposed agreement with EIC, subject to approval by councils of the town as to form. And be it further resolved, the town supervisor and councils of the town are authorized to execute any additional documents and ne necessary to facilitate the enactment of the CPACE program and EIC's administration of the program. Do we have a motion? Second. Okay, so we have been talking about this new option offered through Energize New York Energy Improvement Corporation, which will make it easier for lenders to offer competitive rates to commercial and not-for-profit entities who are making energy improvements to their buildings in the town. We're happy to be able to adopt this new local law to make that possible. All those in favor? It's a Aye. roll call vote. Oh, sorry, roll call vote. Okay. Um, Councilmember Shaw? Aye. Councilmember Wilcher? Aye. Councilmember Feldman? Aye. Count, uh, Supervisor Levenberg? Aye. So Okay, and before we go into the next one, I just want to also add that I know that um, there is some legislation before the Assembly, and I think maybe just recently introduced into the Senate, to allow CPACE product to apply also for new building construction and not just for um, renovations to uh, buildings. And I know that we reached out to Assemblywoman Galef today to ask her to jump on as a co-sponsor for that legislation and also um, had asked Senator Carlucci if he would consider sponsoring it. Um, I believe that Senator Parker on the Energy Committee has introduced the legislation there today or will be tomorrow. So if we could just reinforce that, Stanley, since we have you. Just do a little <laughs> shout out for that, okay? <laughs> I don't, but I feel like it's either 8705 uh, in the assembly or 7805, I might just have it not perfectly in my head, but I think, I can't remember, it's either 8705 or 7805, and um, again, it's, uh, I, I can get that information to you, but I had already sent it to John Mulgrew and to Senator Carlucci directly, so, okay, just that request, I'm just reinforcing it since you happen to be here this evening. Thank you. Fantastic. Okay, so, moving right along. Yes. Resolution. Adopting local law number 3 of 2019, formally proposed local law number 6 of 2019, to enact Chapter 6 of the Town Code, establishing the position of alternate for the town's land use boards. Whereas, the Town of Austin has three land use boards, the Planning Board, Zoning Board of Appeals, and Architectural Review Board, which boards hear land use applications within their jurisdiction as authorized by state law and the Town Code. And whereas, on occasion and for a variety of reasons, a town board member, a board member may not be able to attend a meeting, which could be detrimental 
essential to the operations of the board and the applications it is considering if there is not a quorum and or there is not a full complement of the board present to vote on the applications. And whereas the town board held a duly noticed public hearing at its regular meeting on Tuesday, May 14th, 2019 at 7.30 p.m. at the Birdsall Fagan Police Court facility at 8688 Spring Street, Austin, New York, on proposed local law number 6 of 2019 to adopt Chapter 6 of the Town Code entitled Alternate Members Land Use Boards, which public hearing was duly adjourned and continued to the Town Board's May 28th, 2019 meeting, and members of the public being able to attend and be heard, the public hearing was closed on May 28th, 2019. And now therefore be it resolved, the Town Board determines that this is a Type 2 action pursuant to the State Environmental Quality Review Act, and therefore no further review is required. And be it further resolved, the Town Board hereby adopts Local Law Number 3 of 2019, formally proposed Local Law Number 6 of 2019, to enact Chapter 6 of the Town Code entitled Alternate Members Land Use Boards, and the Town Clerk is directed to enter said local law in the minutes of this meeting into the local law book for the Town of Austin, to publish said minutes in a newspaper published in the Town, if any, or in such were in such newspaper published in the county in which such town may be located having a circulation in such town, and affidavits of said publication shall be filed with the town clerk and to file a copy of said local law with the Secretary of State of New York. Do I have a motion? Move. Second. Okay, so as we mentioned at the start of our meeting, we just lost an important member of our planning board who had been sick on and off for some time, uh, but was always a trooper. Uh, for this type of eventuality, as well as others that may arise, we think this is an excellent new law to make our land use boards stronger and more effective. And I think we have a roll call vote on this. Oh, indeed. Um, Councilmember Shaw? Aye. Councilmember Wiltshire? Aye. Councilmember Feldman? Aye. Supervisor Levenberg? Aye. Okay. All right. With that, move into monthly correspondence to be received and filed. I think we have none. Correct. Uh, monthly report. Okay. Resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Austin hereby accepts the following monthly reports for the month of May 2019 from Town Clerk's Office, Town Supervisor's Office, Town Tax Receiver's Office, Dale Cemetery, and Town Building Department. We have a motion. Move. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And finally, visitor recognition. Hearing none? Okay, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. May I please have a motion to enter into executive session vice of council? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I look forward to seeing everyone next Tuesday right here at the courthouse uh, for the town board work session where we will be discussing the proposed Rivernal project, which is currently before the town planning board. Um, we will be here because the assessor's office will be holding grievance day at 16 Croton Avenue, and that is on June 18th. Um, so make sure to note the change in location and in case you plan to attend Grievance Day, make sure to note that as well. Um, thanks once again. Have a fantastic week and happy Father's Day to all those wonderful fathers out there. <laughs>